Charles Dickens began his career as a journalist in the theater of the world writing newsy op-ed pieces. He eventually published his own periodical called Household Words, which later became known as All Year Round. His ability to infuse in his writing amazing reality made him one of the most astute commentators of the age, and it also enabled him to break new ground using journalism as a catalyst for inspiring change. In this weekly publication, Household Words, he not only covered social, political, and economic news, he also serialized some of his most popular works, including Hard Times, highlighting the need for educational reform, and Tale of Two Cities, set in the French Revolution. And he also introduced other notable writers, including Elizabeth Gaskell and Elizabeth Barrett Browning. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. A time very much like your own. Welcome. I'm delighted you've come to explore Charles Dickens' The Continuing Victorian Narrative. I've been told that many view my era as one of the most familiar, yet enigmatic in history, a period of high ideals marred by egregious failures. And I agree. My time, like yours, is best understood through a prism of contrasting lights and shadows. It is this dance of light and dark upon an era's ever-changing prism that I endeavored to capture in my writing. Although you may think of me as only a novelist, I was also, if I do say so myself, a very influential journalist. As I hope you'll discover, I was a major actor in the theater of the world, as well as the theater of imagination. So, as you explore both the real and the unreal vignettes in the exhibition, I encourage you to reflect upon the myriad connections between my era and your own. What are the common ideals? What the similar failings? What social, political, and economic problems did those of my time manage to address? And what work has yet to be done? Above all, enjoy your visit. As one of my favorite characters would say, Tiny Tim, God bless us, everyone. The Gentlemen's Club was the focal point of masculine privilege in Victorian England. By going to his club, the English gentleman could escape domestic pressures while surrounding himself with men of equal social rank and political or recreational interests. London's Athenium Club, established in 1823 by painter Sir Thomas Lawrence and writer John Wilson Croker, recruited luminaries from scientific, artistic, and literary worlds. The Athenium Club is named after Athena, the goddess of wisdom, arts, and literature. Among the notable members of this club include Robert Browning, John Ruskin, William Holman Hunt, Rudyard Kipling, and later, Sir Winston Churchill. As the Victorian era progressed, gentlemen's clubs were formed for a variety of reasons. The Royal Automobile Club for car enthusiasts, or the Travelers Club for those traveling outside of London 500 miles or more. The Green Room Club, established by actor theater manager Henry Irving, and the 8th Duke of Beaufort, Henry Somerset, was formed for actors and patrons of the theater. Henry Irving, showcased here in this portrait by Edwin Long, was one of the first actors ever to be knighted, which helped raise the social standing of the actor's profession. While men today will corral their personal items into a dop kit for traveling, the Victorian gentleman would travel with his grooming kit and shaving papers, embellished by a beloved female. This Victorian grooming kit from a private collection includes necessities such as a comb, calling card case, straight pins, 
glass bottles for smelling salts or powdered opium, and a cravat twister.